There were fast cars and there were estate cars, but there were no genuinely fast estate cars before Audi and Porsche got together and unleashed the RS2 upon the world in 1994. In the three decades since then, Audi has crafted the RS Avant into a breed all of its own, creating a car culture unlike any other in motoring. Here we celebrate what we believe to be the seven most significant examples from those three decades. Welcome then to a celebration of the Audi RS estate. So this is where it all started with the Audi RS estate. I remember this car. <laughs> That's how old I am, I'm afraid. I remember this car when it was brand new. And it was just like nothing that anyone had produced in its day. No, no one had kind of put two and two together and gone, tell you what, why don't we make a really nutcase performance car out of an estate car? Anyway, Audi did in conjunction with Porsche. And the 315 PS monster of an RS2 was the result. It felt like a rocket ship in its day and it, it still feels pretty brisk today. <laughs> I mean 315 horsepower in not very much weight because cars weighed an awful lot less then than they do now. Still gives you a very rapid car. Lots of torque in the mid-range still. The gearbox isn't up to much. Actually do you know what? It's not as bad as I remember. It's, it's it's not beautiful, it's kind of heavy and clumsy and a little bit notchy. I'm driving this car a lot faster than maybe I should given it's, it's such a valuable old girl, but I'm really quite enjoying it. What I, what I don't enjoy now and never did then is the fact that the seat is fixed. You can't lower it, you can't even change the backrest in it. The driving position is not great in the RS2, you just sit too high in it basically. But the rest of it, I mean, this is a pristine example. I don't know how much it would be worth, a lot. Um, but the rest of it still feels just as it did then, kind of beautifully, unnecessarily well made. And it's just a, it's still a lovely thing to sit in and drive, but it's actually more dynamic than I, than I suspected or feared it might be. This is still a properly fast car. And people just look at you like, you know what you're on about in an RS2. There's a kind of quiet nod of approval if you get seen driving an RS2. Not that there are that many about. Love it, absolutely love it. Right, let's try some of the more modern stuff. From the RS2, we go straight to the first RS4, codenamed B5 and bursting with potential, courtesy of its Cosworth tuned 2.7 litre twin turbo V6. How does it compare to the original? Okay, so I'm having a little bit of a strange moment here because I remember the B5 RS4, the one that followed the RS2, as being not very good. I remember it as being really quite a blunt instrument. It's mighty, the motor in this car. A lot more power than it was in the RS2. But what I remember back then was that there was a lovely engine in a not very good car. Now starting to think that the B5 RS4 wasn't actually that bad and that it was actually really rather lovely. <laughs> it's still a bit kind of big and cuddly and cumbersome, but the steering's better than I remember. And it just feels more, more fun, I guess, than I remember from a brand new one. This is a really sweet example too. It feels, well, it's got very funky seats in it. Maybe that's what's making a difference. These seats are not standard. They're kind of super supportive, almost. They're leather covered, and they're delightful, and they squeak a bit, but the support they've got is just fantastic. But the, this gearbox is miles better than I remember. The brakes are better than I remember. It's soft, you know, it kind of rolls a bit when you're throwing it about. But look, this is a 20 odd year old car, but it doesn't feel it. I'd love one of these. I would absolutely love one of these. In fact, I would love this one. It's really nice and it's a lot less of a shambles than I remember. Core. 
Yes, please. B5 RS4. Tick. It was always the flared wheel arches that made the original RS6, codenamed the C5, look so menacing. It was the epitome of cool when it was launched 20 years ago, and its 4.2 litre twin turbo V8 gave it monstrous performance to match. But was it any good to drive? I love the way this thing looks. I really do. I call it the layer cake car because they featured one of these going up the driveway to Stoke Park Golf Course at the beginning of the layer cake film. Um, anyway, once again, I'm old enough to remember going on the launch of this thing and driving it in Germany and thinking, okay, so I have to be honest, I thought, what a shed. I thought, amazing looks. Totally nailed the looks. The rest of it, not that great. Soft, not very engaging, not very well sorted chassis, um, kind of rubbery steering, crummy gearbox, not very good brakes, just not a very thoroughly engineered car. And I have to say, not much has changed. I still adore the way this version of RS6 looks, but the way it drives is not great. It's just so soft, it's too cuddly, and yet at the same time the ride's really stiff. So look, dynamically this is not the Audi RS Estate's finest moment. Stylistically, it is possibly the moment. Shame really, because if it was that much better to drive, a little bit better to drive than it was, or is, actually it needs to be a lot better to drive, it would be one of the greats, but as it is, nah, this thing needed work when it was new and nothing has changed. The B7 RS4 Avant from 2006 was one of Audi's finest driver's cars, full stop, and it remains so even in 2024. And this is why. The B7 Audi RS4 is a car I kind of ache to own, especially the estate. The Saloon was a really, really lovely car. It really took it to the M3 in a day. But the estate was always the one to have, and this thing is just delightful in everything it does. It still has that slight edge of kind of ever so slightly unnecessarily beefy Audi Teutonic build quality to it. How can a car be too well built? But there is, it's just, you can't fault this car. I'm really struggling to fault this car. The motor in it is so strong. The gear ratios are also really, really nice. When you shift up from third to fourth, it almost doesn't feel as if you put any interruption into the flow of acceleration at all, because the ratio is really close. The gear change is really nice. That's one of the things that define the, the B7 over the B5. The gear, the transmission just got much, much better. The whole car just got dynamically sharper. I'm not going to set a lap time in it around here, because I think that just would feel a bit too cruel, but I reckon it would set a pretty fast time, to be honest, because it's so rapid down the straights. It stops just faithfully and powerfully under brakes. The steering is so much better, I think, than almost any other Audis, with the possible exception of the original V8 R8. Lovely, lovely steering, the B7 RS4. And the way it looks, I just go a bit wibbly for the way this car looks. I absolutely love it. I think I'd have one of these things in my life before I had the RS4 the latest RS4 competition. Oh, I'd love one of those too. This thing though, this thing is special, really special. They hit a high point. Did Quattro GmbH, which then became Audi Sport. This, this, this is still the pinnacle. I was slightly wondering whether it would still be as good as I remembered it to be, but it's absolutely lovely, this car. And it doesn't feel old at all, it just feels lovely. On paper, the C6 RS6 from 2008 had it all. A screaming V10 engine, a four-wheel drive chassis with a 4060 rear weight bias that was tuned, said Audi, to deliver more adjustable handling than the regular S6 Avant, 
plus an even more sophisticated version of the Dynamic Ride Control Adaptive Damper System that made the B7RS4 such a weapon. And yet in practice, the C6 RS6 never quite hit the spot somehow. It still seems completely mad to think that manufacturers were hell-bent on putting a V10 engine in anything that had remotely sporting pretensions. And when they put a V10 in the RS6, well, the engine was blinding, as you'd expect. The trouble is, it wasn't attached to a very good gearbox. And once again, the chassis of the RS6 did not live up to what was beneath that bit of the car, unfortunately. Even on this quite smooth track, you can see that I'm just bouncing away. The ride is too stiff. The springs are so violently stiff. It's just crazy. And yet the steering isn't, you know, there's no delicacy to the steering in the V10 RS6 at all. And it's far too heavy relative to all the other cars that I've driven. It's, um, yeah, it's just not a particularly happy marriage of engine, brakes, gearbox, chassis, etc. It's that this engine was just crying out to be in a much, much better car. I mean, there's an enormous amount of cult status behind the V10 RS6, and if you kind of look at it on paper, it's got everything. It's just, when you drive it, you just think, oh, please can you ride a bit more comfortably? Please can the gearbox be better? Please can the steering be less cumbersome? So it's a car that's quite frustrating, ultimately. I kind of like it and admire Audi for doing what they did, but it's, it ain't one of the great RS estate cars. It really isn't. It's probably the most frustrating of the lot, actually, because it's it could and should be so much better. Nah, nothing changes. The B7 is still the one, although the new ones, as we'll see, they're pretty good too. The latest RS6 performance is not a subtle car, not by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a very, very good one, even in this esteemed company. And this is why. <laughs> it really is a beast of a car, the RS6. Uh, I mean, it always was, as we found out from the, from the older ones. Just a, just a crazy car. Crazy, big, larry, fast German estate car. <laughs> or, and saloon on occasions. But an RS6, it's just, this latest in, incarnation of it is kind of almost a cartoon of a car that was already quite cartoonish. It's just so extrovert in everything it does. From the massive wheel arches that it's got and the huge wheels that lurk within to everything it does on the move is just big and brawny and it, it's a muscle car masquerading as an estate car. But when you put your foot down and do this kind of stuff in it, you cannot argue with how fast and how good an RS6 performance is. Because it is just epic. It is a, so much more sorted than it than you sort of think it would be from the looks. You, you kind of look at it and think, there's no way that thing's going for a corner, doing anything other than ruining both its outside tyres, but it's quite nimble, it's quite agile. It's seriously fast in a straight line. The gearbox just works brilliantly. The brakes work really well. It doesn't feel anywhere near as heavy as the numbers say it is. Numbers say it's like 2.2 tonnes. doesn't feel like that at all. It does when you really want it to change direction quickly, but I mean, there, I've just turned in and the tail has just tucked the nose in nicely. It's phenomenal, this car. It does kind of represent just how good and how far the Audi RS estate has come. Kind of more so than the RS4 competition, just because it's just bigger and larrier and more impressive. But it costs 111,000 quid, this car which is kind of loopy really. But you know, ever since they did the RS2, that car was all about, not just moving the goalposts a little bit on the, on the 
football pitch, it just picked the goal, goal posts up and put them on another football pitch altogether compared with the estate car. And that's kind of what the, R, the latest RS6 does. They're all good. Some of them are very good and a couple of them are great. The RS6 performance is, is teetering on the great. V1 for me is still the V7 RS4. But I think probably second equal with quite a few of the others is the RS6. In theory, there isn't much to distinguish the latest RS4 competition from the regular RS4. But beneath its familiar skin, the competition has undergone all sorts of modifications to make it a better, more involving car to drive. And the result is quietly spectacular. You can feel the modern polish in the RS4 competition, without question. Even if you go straight from the V7 RS4, which is, a, I still think, my favourite, into this, it does just have an extra edge of refinement to it. Predominantly, that's the difference. Um, although, obviously, with the 2.7 twin-turbo V6, even though it's got a touch more power than the big thump of V8, atmospheric V8 of the V7, you get more torque with this twin turbo 2.7 V6, a lot more torque and it's also really quite good at the top too but it's, it doesn't have the charisma of that V8 that you got in the V7. What it does have though is an, just an extra element of agility to it. This one's got adjustable suspension because it's the, it's the competition and you know, it does feel very light and nimble on its feet. And the cabin is, it's terrific. It's very nice, but it ain't a patch on the old B7's cabin for me. It just doesn't have that beautiful, unbelievable slightly build quality to it. It feels like a very nice, well-made, expensive car inside here. But it doesn't make my heart thump as much as the B7 even though it's very quick and good fun and has lots of grip on its coarser tyres and actually seems quite a good value at 80 grand. I know it's a crazy amount of money but it's a lot of car this. What a great collection of cars. What a legacy Audi has created and what a shame it is that there will be no more cars like this from Audi in years to come. Such is the progress of the world in which we live right now. To pick a favourite would seem thoroughly unfair because each of these cars fascinates, but for different reasons. The original RS2 remains an incredible machine, not just because it created the breed. But if we were to pick a winner, well, it would have to be the B7 RS4. In its day, this car was good enough to put one over a BMW M3 and 15 years later, it feels, if anything, even more special than that. It is the one we would want to take home and keep forever. Although, to be honest, any of our seven would do just fine. Cheers for watching, and remember to subscribe if you'd like to see more vids like this from Auto Express in future.